Okay, so what is the period of our trigonometric graphs? And we're gonna talk about sine and cosine graphs. So when talking about the period, what we're talking about is how long is it gonna take the graph to begin starting repeating itself? That means to begin re start repeating the values of the outputs. So when looking at the period, remember when, how we found this, the sine and cosine graph is we evaluated for our sine and cosine by utilizing the unit circle. So what I want to do is I'm going to use the unit circle to help me explain why we find or how we find the period of a trigonometric graph. So remember what we have is you know we have angles here and we evaluate for certain angles. Our first angle, you know, we can evaluate for pi over 4, and we have a point square root of 2 over 2, comma, square root of 2 over 2, where the sine value is square root of 2 over 2, and the cosine value is square root of 2 over 2. And, you know, this repeats. There's many different angles that you could have. We could even have, like, 5 pi over 6, which would be negative square root of 3 over 2, comma, 1 half. And for all these points, every one of these input values, which are, we call our angles, we can evaluate for sine and cosine. So here we have negative square root of 3 over 2, comma, 1 half. And we keep on going on and on and on. But what we notice is, as this graph, as we keep on going all the way around, remember this is cyclical, right? Our angles are cyclical. So once we get around, we call that distance of an angle 2 pi. Now once I continue, once I can go back over, what happens is our graph just starts repeating itself again, right? This angle is different. If I go all the way around and back over, these are what we call coterminal angles. But it's important for us to understand that the cosine of pi over 4 is exactly the same as the cosine of 9 pi over 4. And the same thing, even if I went around again, if I kept on adding 2 pi, we're still going to get the exact same values. It's just going to, all we need to do is just add again another 2 pi. And we're going to get back to our exact same point again. So, you know, if I say the cosine of 17 pi over 4. And what, so what happens is our graph repeats itself. Even though we have different output values, we're getting the exact same output values. So when we're graphing, and let, I'm just going to utilize the cosine function here. So y equals cosine of, uh, cosine of x. All right, so when looking at the cosine graph, and we could do this the same thing for the y, but what, you know, when we look at a point, we start at 0, and then our next point is pi halves, we have 0. Then we go down at 3 pi halves, we're at, down at negative 1. And then we come back up to 0 at, I'm sorry, that's at pi. And then at 3 pi halves, what we do is we come back up to 0, and then at 2 pi, we're back up to 1 again. And what you notice is from 0 to 2 pi, I'm at the exact same point where I started. And if I was to continue this for more and more points, what you'll notice is the graph continues to do the exact same pattern. So when asking is, you know, what is the period? What is the distance that a graph takes before it starts repeating itself? So for sine and cosine, that distance is 2 pi. Now, how do we figure that out? How do we always know? Is it always going to have the same period? Is it going to change? How do we know exactly what it's going to be or what it's going to be? Well, to do that, we need to look at our standard form for each function. So we have y equals a times sine of bx minus c plus d. And we have y equals a cosine of bx minus c plus d. And what we notice is when trying to determine the period, what we're going to do is the period is going to be affected. So we know that for cosine and for sine, this distance where it takes the graph to repeat itself, even though I only have the sine graph pictured, um, it's the same exact same thing for the sine, or I only have the cosine graph pictured, it's the exact same thing for the sine graph, but this distance is 2 pi. So you can say the period of all sine and cosine graphs is going to be 2 pi unless you have an alteration or a transformation of b. So if you have a number that's going to be in there for b, you're going to take 2 pi and divide it by b. And that works for both sine and cosine graphs. So let's just take a look at you know, kind of two functions here. Let's say I have y equals the sine of 4x. And then let's do y equals the cosine of um, 
let's do the cosine of pi divided by 3. All right, of x divided by 3. OK, so in this case, what we need to do is we need to determine what b is in each instance. So in this case, we have a value of b which equals 4. So therefore, my period is going to be 2 pi divided by 4, which equals pi halves. So that means rather than the distance of my graph competing a cycle at 2 pi, now my graph is going to complete a cycle in, in the distance of pi. So you can see it's been shrunk. Now when I look at cosine of, x, or cosine of x over 3, I can determine that b is equal to the value in front of x is 1, 1 being divided by 3. So therefore, it's equal to 1 third. So my period is going to be 2 pi divided by 1 third. And to divide by a fraction, we multiply by the reciprocal. And therefore, I get a period of 6 pi. So therefore, for if I was going to graph this function with a period of 6 pi, rather than it had taking a distance of 2 pi for the graph to repeat itself, it's now going to take a distance of 3 times what I'm showing you for the graph to complete itself. So it's being stretched horizontally. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is the period for sine and cosine. Hope it helped. Thanks.